Hello everyone, welcome to What If Deku Learned Breathing Techniques and Becomes Demon Slayer Part 1. Before we start please go support Tichi67 for writing that awesome fanfic. Now let's begin. CH.0 History. Narrator Pav. The final battle against the Demon King could only be described with one word, failure. Sure all the upper moons were slayed, but almost all the Hashira and good portion of corporation itself were killed and the Demon King escaped. Due to the scale of the battle though the Japanese government and its people recognized that demons were in fact real. Due to the Demon King escaping, the number of demons increased including the strength of them. As a result the government pumped a lot of money into the Demon Slayer Corporation and officially recognized them as in part of the Japanese military, which increased the membership from only being in the hundreds to the tens of thousands. Academies were made to help train the new recruits different breathing techniques, some being from the core branches flame, water, stone, thunder, and wind and others from the extended branches. As time passed becoming a demon slayer became more mainstream to the point, if you didn't become on you were considered weak, demon meat, or a waste of space. The one thing everyone wanted to be though was a Hashira, the strongest of the demon slayers. The only way to become a Hashira though was to kill one of the 12 Moonur 100 demons and be at the rank of Kinoe and increase the amount due to the life expectancy increase. So, usually there aren't a lot of Hashira. Centuries have passed since the final battle and along the way advancement in technology have taken place. The only constants that remain in the world are Nichiren blades are still the only effective means to kill a demon besides the sun. Also the demon slayer uniform itself are still mostly the same besides slight upgrades to the fabric itself to make it stronger. They no longer use crows, but instead phones for communication. For this period of time the population consists of around 90% being a demon slayer, former demon slayer, or had the training, but didn't make the cut. Due to the increase in strength in humans, demons are almost tripled in strength since the final battle, with increase in numbers. The 12 Hashiras in order of strongest to weakest. 1. Ng Todoroki Flame Hashira uses flame breathing which consists of 9 forms. Became a Hashira after killing a lower moon 4. Taught flame breathing by the last Rengoku, carries the legacy. Good father but twins are still cold towards him due to him always working. Appearance wears the flame Hashira Hayori. Tsuguko Toya Todoroki. Age 45 sword flame-like design on the edge with a black body. Endeavor, 2. Hikaru Agatsuma Thunder Hashira uses thunder breathing which consists of seven forms. Became a Hashira after reaching Kino and killing a hundred demons. Family lineage of thunder users. Appearance 510 lean man with golden eyes and short black hair like Zenitsu's which has yellow tips, wears a yellow Hayori with triangles on it. Tsuguko Denki Kaminari. Age 29 sword yellow with lightning streaks through it. Ak, 3. Toshinori Yagi Wind Hashira uses wind breathing which consists of nine forms. Became a Hashira after killing a lower moon six. Learned wind breathing from the old wind Hashira. Appearance wears a white Hayori with a kanji of peace on the back oe. Tsuguko Izumi Yagi. Former Izuku Yagi age 49 sword green edge with black body all might. 4. Rei Todoroki Ice Hashira uses ice breathing which consists of six forms. Became Hashira after becoming Kino and killing 100 demons. Developed ice breathing after learning water breathing from the former water Hashira. Married to Enji and has five kids. Appearance middle-aged woman with long white hair usually in a ponytail wearing a ice blue Hayori. Sword is also ice blue. Tsuguko Nun. Age 41 MHA. 5. Hizoka Nakayama Stone Hashira uses stone breathing which consists of five forms. Unlike the previous Hashiras he become one from recommendation by the master. Also uses a flail and axe instead of a blade. Appearance a tall muscular man at 6'5 with short curly brown hair and green eyes, and dot unlike the other Hashiras, he only wears the demon slayer uniform. Very straightforward and stubborn but kind at the heart. Tsuguko Ajiro Kirishima. Age 27 Ak. 6. Liko Tomioka Water Hashira uses water breathing which consists of 11 forms. Became a Hashira after killing a lower moon 3. Appearance a woman with short spiky black hair like Giyu's and ocean blue eyes. Her Hayori is ocean blue with wave designs on it like Tanjiro's on final selection. She has loud and arrogant attitude, but likes joking around with her fellow Hashiras. Looks down on people weaker than her so anyone not a Hashira. Tsuguko Nun. Age 25 Sword A Pure Blue Sword Ak. 7. Mizuki Harada Shadow Hashira uses shadow breathing which consists of five forms. Became Hashira after defeating Lower Moon 2. Appearance a young woman with long wavy jet black hair with gray tips and black eyes. Her Hayori is black with a hexagon style on it, but the lines for the hexagons are a dark gray. She is quiet and shy around new people, but quite friendly with her fellow pillars. Tsuguko Fumikage Tokoyami. Age 21 Sword Pure Black with a Gray Edge. Ak. 8. Rumi Asajiyama Beast Hashira uses beast breathing which consists of 10 forms technically 11, but last one was just made for the situation. Became a Hashira after killing a lower moon 5. 
Appearance a young woman with long white hair with tan colored skin. Has a loud personality. Her Hayori is green with visible sewing from demon attacks. Tsuguko Nun. Age 26 or dual wields two teal colored swords, both are chipped to work with her breathing technique. Mirko. 9. Shinji Nishi Wood Hashira uses wood breathing which consists of six forms. Became a Hashira after becoming a Kino and killing a hundred demons. Appearance a young man at 5'6 with brown eyes and hair who wears a wooden mouth guard. His Hayori is just brown with a branch design on the back. He has a calm personality and gets along with most of the Hashira. Tsuguko Abara Shiazaki. Age 27 sword brown on the edge and the body being a steel color. Kamui Woods. 10. Asami Hashibira Flower Hashira uses flower breathing which consists of seven forms. Became Hashira after becoming a Kino and killing a hundred demons. Her family has had a long lineage of flower and beast Hashiras. Good friends with Rumi. Appearance has short black hair that turns into blue tips with two different eye colors, left being blue and right being green, and stands around 5-5. Usually has a caring personality, but when she becomes annoyed gets very loud and rude. Tsuguko Achako Yuraka. Age 25. Sword pink edge with a steel-colored body. Ak. 11. Takeo Komodo Fist Hashira uses martial arts instead of a sword he calls his breathing technique, Rampage Breathing, which has 12 forms. Became a Hashira after reaching Kino and killing a hundred demons. Appearance 6 5 middle aged man with several scars littered all over his body, gray hair styled in a buzz cut and green eyes. Doesn't wear a Hayori but a brown cloak instead. A little on the crazy side and loves fighting even in his old age. Tsuguko Nun. Age 55 sword uses Nichiren gauntlets that kill a demon if they are hit hard enough. Ak. 12. Inko Yagi Ora Hashira uses Aura breathing which consists of five forms. Became a Hashira after reaching Kino and killing a hundred demons. Hayori is pure green with little designs of pulses. Tsuguko Nijir Hado. Age 41. Sword just a normal steel color MHA. CH.1 Origins. Narrator Pav. The year is 2176, 250 years since the final battle, and the implication of the Demon Slayer Corporation into the government. Demon Slayers are viewed as the saviors of humanity, and no one can think of a world without them, because would there even be one without them? A strong rule the world if you are or were a demon slayer you were put on a pedestal of greatness, but if you showed no potential or were too weak you were looked down upon. The one goal everyone had though was to become one of the Hashira the strongest demon slayers in the world. Today, two children just turned six years old and are having a talk with their parents about their future. Ah, mom and dad wanted to talk to us today, but I don't know what for I don't remember doing anything. Unless, she got us in trouble, but I really don't mind. She is my sis after all, she will probably drag me into something I don't want to do but thinks I do. I don't really blame her it's not like I show any tell that I don't. It probably ain't even that bad, but how could you tell what is fun and unpleasant if they both feel the same? Aizu, I'm worried. Did we do something? Izuku? No. Did you do something? And no. Izuku? Then we will be fine Izumi. Izumi? Okay I trust you brother. The door opened. Me and Izumi instantly went to a kneeling position. Izuku. Izumi. Your mother and I want to discuss something with you. Izumi and Izuku. Understood father. Ashinori. I wanted to ask if you two were interested in starting to learn my wind breathing. Yes we would love to right brother. Izumi asked me. I thought if I did this would I finally feel something. Could I even feel something? It doesn't matter I got to try. Yes, I also would like to receive the training. I answered. Just as I expected from my children. Your training will begin immediately. Yelled our father in joy while our mother just chuckled at his antics. So, our training began. The training was simple and not that hard at all. He just wanted us to enhance our bodies so we could handle the breathing technique once we were older. He said he wouldn't teach us the forms until we were around 10 or so. Izumi was bummed out by the news, I could care less and just went along with the training. Two years have passed since that day, and it is currently our birthday. Our parents introduced us to some of their friends' kids. They honestly didn't look all that much both being sets of twins. The two ash blonde siblings being loud and vulgar even though we are barely eight, the girl I noticed slightly more on the friendly side. The other set was a girl and a boy with split red and white hair. Both giving me the vibe that they were like me but different. The boy looked like he didn't want to be there and was trying to look cool while the girl was just shy. Izumi got along with them pretty fast, I simply wasn't interested. That pissed off the blonde boy. Boy freckle face what's up with that disinterested look. We ain't good enough to know you or something. The blonde boy yelled at me. I have no clue what he's hollering about, I'll just let Izumi handle it. Katsuki calm down he is my brother and he's just on the shy side. He didn't mean any disrespect the blonde now named Katsuki seemed to calm down after being told that, but he just glared at me as his response. Katsumi. He looks weak. Shame he was kinda cute. Shoka. 
He's cute, but I think Izumi looks stronger. Shoto. Pitsuki. Probably a weakling trying to hang with the strong. Two years later Izumi and I began our training with wind breathing. It felt wrong. Every single time I used it form it just didn't feel right, it disgusted me every time I did it. No matter how many times my father told me I did it perfectly or Izumi congratulating me or mother celebrating when we mastered a new form. It felt completely wrong. As time passed Izumi and I hung out with the twins all of them a lot. However, I could tell they didn't really like me especially Katsuki and Shoto. It's not like I can blame them I never really made effort to become real friends with them. I also learned that they think that Izumi is stronger than me. On our 14th birthday father came up to us and told us. Next week I am going to choose my Tsuguko. He then left with mother on a mission. If you're wondering it Tsuguko is the chosen successor of a Hashira and are likely candidates for future Hashira openings. I really don't want to be the Tsuguko. Izumi Pav. Oh my god I can become a Tsuguko even though Izuku is most likely going to get it, that doesn't mean I'm going to give up. Oh I have to call the others and tell them the good news. I run off to my room to get my phone. Izumi. Guys, guess what I have great news, Itsuki. Your brother dead or something. Itsumi. You got a boyfriend. They don't know why, but Kitsuki and Shoto got angry at that suggestion. Shoka. You learned a new breathing form. Shoto. Your brother got a girlfriend. They don't know why, but Kitsumi and Shoka got angry at that suggestion. Izumi. Not funny Kitsuki. No my father is going to choose his Tsuguko. Itsumi. That's great news Izumi. So, when's your ceremony also can we go? Izumi. It's next week and why is it my ceremony? Itsuki. Isn't it obvious Izumi. You're going to get chosen. Shoto. I agree. Shoka. Yeah. Izumi. I don't know about that. Itsuki. What do you mean he wouldn't choose Freckle Face? He's too weak to be a demon slayer, let alone a Tsuguko. All except Izumi. Yeah yep yes damn straight. Izumi. What are you guys talking about? Izuku isn't weak. All? Huh? Itsuki. What are you going on about Izumi of course he's weak. He couldn't even raise his sword against me. Izumi. Oh he does that when doesn't deem a person worth the challenge also Izuku is way stronger than me. All? Huh. Shoto. But you beat us all the time and you're telling us he's stronger than you. Izumi. Yep I haven't beat him a single time and I think he holds back on me too. Itsuki. That bastardy dare look down on me I'll show him. Shoto. It looks like I underestimated him but I know I'm stronger. Shoka. I knew he was holding back but I didn't think by that much. Itsumi. Hmm so he's also strong that's a nice bonus. Izumi. Okay see you guys later I have to make dinner. All. Bye. Time skip. One week later. Izuku Pav. We are having a big event to celebrate our father's chosen Tsuguko. Izumi invited her friends, mother called their parents to join, and father invited the Hashira of the time. Flame, Ice, Fist, and Thunder Dot. I was not looking forward to the event, also Izumi's friends are starting to act different around me. Itsuki keeps glaring at me in anger more than usual, Kitsumi stares at me when she thinks I'm not looking, the same for Shoko also, and Shoto stares at me with an intimidating look it doesn't work. Anyway the ceremony is starting it looks like. Ashinori. Thank all for coming to my announcement ceremony for the position of my Tsuguko. Anyway let's get right to it so we can celebrate even longer. Everyone but Izuku sweat dropped. Ashinori. Anways for the position of my Tsuguko. I choose my son Izuku Yagi for the position due to his mastery of the wind breathing and unbelievable strength for his age group. Izuku please come up and give your acceptance speech. While everyone was cheering and congratulating me all I could think about was why me? I don't want it. Can I even do it? Do I even want to do it? Why don't I feel anything? I didn't even realize that I made it to the stage. I looked to the crowd, Izumi looked disappointed, but still happy for me, her friends looked shocked, I guess they thought Izumi would get it, mom looked happy and proud, and dad gave me an approving look. All I could say was, I'll try my best. Then I got off the stage and went to the garden to think. Do I even want to be a demon slayer? One month later, I don't want to be a demon slayer. I don't feel anything. I need to feel something. I got to find something to make me feel. I have decided I'm going to travel the country to try new things and hopefully fulfill my quest, but I can't do that while I'm at Tsuguko. I'm going to quit. I'll tell Izumi first even though she usually doesn't listen to my opinion, I know she only does that because I don't complain anyway, and she does what she thinks is best for me. I found Izumi at the mall with her friends. She calls them our friends, but I hardly even talk to them. Izumi we need to talk. Alone. She was surprised I was there but quickly asked, what is it brother is it something important? I answered, yes, let's go somewhere private. However before we could leave the others stopped us asking where we are going. I told them none of their business, but Izumi said I had to tell her something. Oh yeah why don't you tell us all together since we're friends, right? Katsuki taunted. 
he's annoying as usual. Izumi seemed to agree with him, it really didn't matter who heard it originally, because it was going to get out anyway. I was trying to save Izumi some face. Izuku. Okay doesn't matter to me. Izumi I'm stepping down from Tsuguko and quitting the demon slayer life. Ball. Huh. Izumi. W.Y. It was our dream why are you turning your back on it, we were supposed become Hashira together, Izuku. It was never my dream Izumi it was yours. My one wish is to find a purpose and to find something to make me feel something. Anything, Izumi. Aren't you happy with us? Starting to tear up, Izuku. No. I walked away after that I didn't even look at their reactions, but I could hear Izumi crying even when I was already at the door. Now I just needed to tell two more people. My mother and my father, I called them and told them I needed to talk to them. They said okay and to meet them at an cafe. After I got there. Izuku. Hi mom and dad I needed to tell you something. Hashinori. What is it that you need my boy? Izuku. I would like to step down from my Tsuguko position and stop training to be a demon slayer. Silence that's what surrounded us for a while. Until my father asked in a serious voice, why? I answered, I never wanted to be a demon slayer. I only did it because I thought it would help me feel again, but I was wrong. So, now I want to travel to find something to make me feel. My father didn't look happy with the answer, no, I'll pretend this never happened, and if you mention it again you are dead to me. Just like that he left. My mom looked reluctant to go and she seemed disappointed, but it wasn't directed at my father. She also left. However, I don't think they realized I wasn't asking for permission I was just stating what I was going to do. At night I left and it would be a long time until I saw any of them again. Two years later, I have been traveling for a while now. I have been all over Japan and I have done so many things. I learned cook, sew, sing, play instruments, dance, helping people, healing people at hospitals, and even archery. But nothing worked, for 16 long years of my life I searched for anything to make me feel, but nothing worked. It was until I was 16 on my birthday that came across someone that would change my life. I was walking down a street at night not really that smart, due to me not carrying a blade, and demons prowl at night. Then I heard a scream and turned down an aisleway and saw a girl with long white hair, who looked about 7 years old, running from a big demon with a bird-like mouth. For the first time in my life I felt something, I felt the need to save that girl, to protect that girl. Before, I knew it my body starting moving on its own. CH.2 Eerie and Training, Izuku Pav. By the time I realized what my body was doing I had already picked up the girl and started running. I started using concentration breathing to maybe get a speed boost to escape the demon and to find a slayer. But I haven't trained in years so at most I can probably keep it active for 30 minutes. The girl knocked me out of my thoughts. Em Mr. Leave me he'll find us no matter what my bee blood is cursed she begged me. But she's a Marechi. She's right we can't lose him then I have to find a slayer. I'm not leaving you behind. I proclaim W.Y. I I don't know we'll figure that out later just hold on to me. I barely made it a block before the demon jumped in front of me. It was tall and extremely muscular. Its hands looked like they morphed into some black substance it looked metallic, and its face had morphed into something that looked like a bird, but the beak had teeth inside it. Where do you think you're going with my keg? I didn't answer and tried to keep running. Dumb human. Blood demon art. Drain. I collapsed on the street. I can't move my body. Why? It feels like I just ran a marathon. You like that human that's my demon art, now I'll be taking my keg back, and I'll just kill you too, come on get up run, I have to protect her only if I was still a slayer and no, it wouldn't matter I would probably would still have lost with wind breathing. Only if I was stronger. Izuku felt shame for the first time in his life. Before the demon got to me its head was all of sudden cut off. I didn't even see it. I looked for the slayer and all I saw was an old man probably barely 5'4 standing behind the demon with a sword with a red edge. Now that I think about I've never seen a red edge before. Are you okay boy? Why yeah. I looked at the girl who looked as shocked as me that someone defeated the demon easily. Are you okay? Um what's your name I didn't get to ask. Oh um it's eerie sir thank you for helping me, but more would just come for me. That's what happened to my parents. Old man. She's a Marechi, right? Izuku. Um from what I can tell yes. Old man. Here take this and follow me. Tosses a package. Izuku. Huh. A wisteria essence pendant. Oh I see to block out Eerie's scent. Thanks. Izuku. Here Eerie wear this and demons won't follow you anymore. Eerie. Thank you. Puts it on. Thank you. Hey wait up for us. Come on Eerie let's follow him. Right. Eerie and I followed the old man until we got to his state. Eerie fell asleep on the way. The old man confronted me and asked me why I helped the girl. I don't really know myself my body just moved on its own. He seemed indifferent to the answer. He then asked me, do you want to be stronger and why? I felt it again the shame of failing to truly protect Eerie. If only I was stronger kept playing in my head on repeat. 
Do I even deserve to protect Eerie? I was strong, but I tossed it away do I deserve a second chance? Would my family even accept me back? Maybe this is my redemption. Do I deserve to be strong? Do I deserve redemption? I looked at Eerie who was sleeping on the couch in the living room then I decided. Yes I want to be stronger so I can protect those who need the protection and to redeem myself for my selfish goals that hurt people close to me. He stared at me for a solid second and then he just said my training began tomorrow. He left for his room and showed me where to lay Eerie down in my room. Narrator Pav. The next day Izuku felt a new emotion. For the first time Izuku felt regret. The old man explained the next morning that the training will take two years plenty of time for the final selection. The first year will solely be conditioning his body back into fighting shape and then push it even farther. The next year would be to teach him the breathing technique with each month working only on one form until it's honed to perfection. Izuku asked what the technique would it be, all the old man said was that it would be a surprise. However, before the training started Izuku asked Yuri if he wanted to take her to an orphanage or if she wanted to stay with him until she was old enough to live on her own. She chose to stay though she was doubtful she'll stay long. Izuku's conditioning consisted of 10 care on, hold his breathe underwater as long as possible sometimes forced underwater, extreme weightlifting, and then the day would end with swordsmanship practice, whether it be on a dummy or the old man the old man always won, and he had to keep total concentration breathing the whole day, even while he slept, or the old man would hit him. This is what made Izuku regret his decision, but Iri's presence reminded him why he did it, so he continued. It took six months for Izuku to master total concentration breathing constant due to the fact he was a little out of shape before the training. The regimen eventually just turned into his morning workout, with the swordsmanship training being his main focus for the second half of the year. During this time Izuku and Iri grew closer with Iri going to Izuku for every little thing whether good or bad. Also Iri finally accepted Izuku's offer and said she'll stay with him permanently. Izuku felt something new. Izuku felt happiness for the first time from Eri's presence and the old man giving him a chance at redemption. The year had passed and now it was time for Izuku to learn the new breathing technique. The old man told him he would learn sun breathing and the 13 forms it contains. Izuku said he never heard of it. The old man said he didn't care and started to explain the first form. First month, first form is called waltzer dance. Just a vertical strike. The first time Izuku used it he could only describe it as whole. He felt whole when he used it, he never felt that during all his years when using wind breathing. He thought he did it pretty good his first try, until the old man said he was all wrong and to try again. Iri at least said it looked beautiful, and that's all that mattered to Izuku. Izuku honed waltz until it took nothing out of him to use, and it could easily slice a steel beam. Second month, second form is called clear blue sky. A downward slash while performing a circular motion. Meant for opponents in a prone state or laying down. After one of the days of training Izuku and Iri went into town to get some groceries for the week. By chance though his parents, sister and her friends went to the same shopping mall. They missed each other by mere minutes. Third month, third form is called Raging Sun. Two horizontal slashes either meant to attack the opponent or the opponent's ranged attacks. Izuku mastered this the fastest compared to other two forms, due to its similarity to one of the wind-breathing forms. They celebrated Iri's birthday where Izuku got her a green bow for her hair. Iri loved it and refused to take it off even for a shower. Izuku was able to enhance the form he increased the range and doubled it to four slashes. Fourth month, fourth form is called burning bones, summer sun. A defensive form meant to block from frontal attacks, creates a shield after performing a circular slash. Iri wants to start training because she wants to be like Izuku, but too instead she wants to protect people from demons, so they don't end up like her parents. The old man began the conditioning training of Iri she is around nine at this time. Fifth month, fifth form is called setting sun transformation. A backflip performed over the opponent, then perform a horizontal slash aiming for the neck. Nothing important for the makeshift family during this month, but a new Hashira was announced. The shadow Hashira. Also it took Izuku two weeks alone to figure out a backflip. Sixth month, sixth form is called solar heat haze. A horizontal slash that's obscured by a haze that makes it unpredictable to the opponent until hit. While Izuku was practicing Iri called him for lunch, but accidentally slipped up and called him dad. To say Iri was embarrassed is an understatement. She was going to apologize until she saw Izuku smiling for the first time. She ran up and hugged him while tearing up, it was great day. Izuku was able to enhance it to be able to use three slashes in the haze. Seventh month, seventh form is called Beneficent Radiance. A spinning or spiral attack that hits the target or targets multiple times. Iri started calling Izuku only dad, and Izuku has finally learned to smile, but unfortunately it's only with Iri so far. Izuku couldn't be happier. Izuku enhanced it where it can hit up to 8 times whether a single target or multiple. 8 month, 8 form is called sunflower thrust. A single thrust. 
Izuku enhanced it to be able to do four thrusts which also easily shatters concrete. Here he can maintain total concentration breathing for half a day. Ninth month, ninth form is called Dragon Sun Halo Head Dance. A continuous attack that takes the form of a flaming dragon and gets stronger with every swing. Iri told Izuku that she wants to live with Izuku permanently. They went to an adoption center later that day. Izuku enhanced it to the point where he could continue using the technique for hours straight before collapsing, and it could easily slice steel. Tenth month, tenth form is called Fire Wheel. A circular downward airstrike usually performed mid-flip. The old man informs Izuku that Iri is not compatible with sun breathing, and if she were to use it, it would most likely do more harm than good for her. Izuku had to come up with something to replace sun breathing with or destroy her dream entirely. Izuku couldn't enhance fire wheel. 11 month, 11th form is called fake rainbow. Attack that lets a user create after images of themselves in order to avoid hits and to land a hit. Izuku asked the old man that after his training if he could teach Yuri the wind breathing he used to practice. The old man couldn't see why not. Izuku asked Yuri if he taught her something different than sun breathing. She didn't mind as long as she could help people. Izuku enhanced fake rainbow to the point that the dodge and attack were instantaneous and could be performed three times in a single breath and with no drawback. Twelfth month, twelfth form is called flame dance. A two-combo strike consisting of an opening vertical slash and one horizontal slash to follow up. How it's used depends on the situation. Izuku enhanced it to a six-combo strike consisting of overhead slash, horizontal, thrust, horizontal, uppercut and ending with a monk cut. Iri began her wind breathing training, and Izuku learned pretty fast that she was a prodigy. Final month, 13th form is Hinakami Kagura. Actually it doesn't have a name I'll just call it this. The 13th form is all 12 forms used in order and performed one right after the other. After each cycle it increases the user's precision with his strikes, agility, and lowers the user's fatigue. The sole purpose of the form is to kill the demon king. The old man told Izuku to aim for at least a day of use. On his first day Izuku collapsed after 20 minutes and only one cycle. It took Izuku one week to reach a one day of use, after that he went into a coma for two days. By the end of the month he was able to do three continuous days, a side effect of the constant training of the 13th form, was his strength and everything this includes both his body and breathing technique increased dramatically. He didn't know it, but he already as strong as an Hashira or stronger. Izuku Pav, I did it. I reached three days. I can't feel anything, my arms feel like they are about to fall off. I feel like my legs will snap if I take another step. My lungs feel like they will explode if I try to breathe. Dad you did it are you alright? Yuri shouted at me in worried tone. I turned to look at her, but my vision was starting to black out and my body collapsed on itself I'm going to faint soon. However, I swear that Yuri looked like a skeleton for a second. Before I blacked out master said something to me. You are ready. That's the last thing I heard before everything went black. When I woke up Yuri was next to me crying her eyes out and screaming on how worried she was. After she calmed down she told me I was out for a week and that the old man wanted to talk to me once I've awoken and eaten. Yuri got me some katsudan, I had six bowls. I visited master and the first thing he told me was, you are ready for the final selection. Really when is it? What date is it? August 28, you have until January 10th to prepare for the final selection. Master. I assume you know what final selection is. Izuku. Just the concept. I kinda dropped out before my dad could explain the details. Master. The final selection is like the entrance exam to a normal college or university, but instead it will be the test to enter at Demon Slayer University. But like the exam for a college depending on which college you choose will change how hard the test will be. The same applies to final selection with the hardest being UA University. Which is where you are going to take yours. Also, the one thing they all have common is that they answer to the Demon Slayer HQ and its leader. Izuku. What do you have to do to pass? Master. You must survive being in a forest filled with demons for a week. The proctors will also make no efforts to save you or any other participants. They will let you die and this goes for all final selections not just UA. Once you pass they will give you uniforms, means of communication to the demon slayer HQ, an ore for your sword, and a dorm key for your dorm at UA. However, you will not need the last one. Izuku. Why not? Master. I have a feeling once you pass that the HQ would have something different planned for you once they see you in action. That is all, you can go do what you want until the selection. Just like that he left me alone in the living room. I guess I'll continue training not enough to hurt myself or push myself too hard. Just enough to stay at this peak. Oh, I'll also finish Yuri's training, she should be at Tsuguko level soon. As I was planning these next few months one thought crossed my mind for first time in years. I wonder how my family is doing. CH.3 The other side of the story, narrator Pav, to get to this side of the story we have to go back a little in time. 
Four years ago, the day Izuku left, Izumi Pav, why would he say that? I thought he wanted this. Does he not love me? No, he looked desperate like he thought this was his last resort. I'm sorry brother I should have noticed sooner that you needed help with your emotion problem. I knew I shouldn't have listened to mom this isn't a phase or something he will grow out of, he needs help. However, my friends reacted different to this revelation from my brother. Katsuki looked like he was about to straight up kill him, Shota looked like he also wanted to kill him, but for some reason it felt different compared to Katsuki's, and Katsumi and Shoka just looked at him in disappointment and me in pity. Katsuki. That bucking bastard how dare he make Izumi cry I knew he was a bucking weirdo, but to think he would make himself a Deku. Shoto. I guess he couldn't handle the pressure of Itsuguko. I was right it should have gone to Izumi. Shoka. Are you okay Izumi? I know this had to be devastating news. I can't believe he would want to quit. Itsumi. I know right he was literally the strongest in our age group at school. Izumi. Shut up. Itsumi. What was that Izumi? Izumi. I said shoot up. They were surprised about the outburst and confused. Izumi. Don't you dare talk about my brother like that in front of me ever again or we're done this goes for all of you starts calming down I'm sorry, but he is still my brother and family will always come first to me no matter their occupation. Now let's just go back to shopping I'll talk to my brother tonight. Itsuki. I've never seen Izumi lose her cool like that. But she needs to realize once this gets out it would just be everyone else. That's just how our society is. Shoto. Why the hell is she defending that Deku? It doesn't matter if he's family he always be a Deku to society. Shoka. Izumi is right, but I don't the rest of Japan would think the same. Itsumi. Must be nice having a sibling that cares that much. Narrator Pav. They continued shopping, but it was tense the whole day, and none of them would be the same again after that day. Now let's fast forward to right after Izuku's conversation with his parents. Ashinori and Inko had just walked out of the cafe. Inko. Don't you think you were a little too harsh back there? Ashi. Sigh probably but it was for his own good. If he were to quit and the media found out they would eat him alive. It would destroy him I've seen it happen before. Inko. You're right we do live in a cruel world even if the demons didn't exist. There will always be demons in people's hearts and it's ugly when they reveal themselves. However, you probably should have broken the news to him better. Ashi. You're right as usual. I'll explain my decision better during dinner tonight. Hey maybe he can try some new things in between his training and eventually his slaying. It would probably be hard though to find the time, but I know once he sets his mind to something he won't stop until it's done. Inko. Chuckle he is your son after all. Ashi. Chuckle no, he is our son. Later that night at dinner. Inko. Dinner is ready Izumi go get your brother he should be in his room. Izumi. Okay. Izumi went to Izuku's room and knocked and told him dinner was ready. He usually replied right away, but unusually there was no response. Izumi knocked again but still no answer. She got worried and tried the door. To her surprise it was unlocked, she walked in and saw that it was empty except with the usual furniture. However, on the bed was a single note, Izumi confused and worried picked up the note. The moment Izumi read the note her world shattered, she didn't know how to react. Should she scream, cry, be angry, or all of the above? She did none of those she just stood there unmoving and broken. She doesn't know how long she stood there it must have been a while due to her mother coming to check on her and her brother. She doesn't even remember handing the letter to her mother, but she does remember the uncontrollable sobbing from her. This alerted her father who once read the letter went to a similar state to her. The Yagi household is never same after that, it truly felt like a piece of the family's heart shattered. Irizumi, mom and dad, I'm sorry about telling you like this, but I have to leave. Don't worry it's not because of you guys. It's getting worse, how can someone live for 14 years and still not feel a single emotion? This is why I left. I'm going to find something, anything to make me feel. It doesn't even have to be a good feeling at this point. Izumi you were probably the best sister a boy could ask for I'm sorry I can't fully appreciate that and I'm sorry for ruining your dream. Mom we didn't talk a lot but I know you truly cared for me and when I come back I wish I can truly appreciate you. Ah don't blame yourself I was going to leave no matter what answer you gave me, I was just telling you what I was going to do no matter the answer this was going to happen. I know how people treat quitters and I have come to terms with that. If it helps your reputation just say you disown me. I will come back once I gain my emotions, if I gain them at all. And if you even want me back. Until then, Izuku, as by law time passed, you can hardly tell any of the Yagis are the same person after that day. Izumi became cold to everyone around her with her only communication with her family and close friend, but even that is at a minimum. She went to her training as an coping mechanism. The once bubbly and carefree girl was gone. Inko fell into a depression and accused herself of being a terrible mother. She almost retired from her slaying completely, but she knew Izuku probably wouldn't want that. 
Toshinori took it the hardest, he blamed himself for Izuku's departure, even if the letter said otherwise. He just fell into his work doing mission after mission to just help him cope with the guilt. Even with minimal interaction with Izuku, Izumi's friends were still affected by his departure without counting Izumi's change. Katsuki was absolutely furious, he couldn't understand why he quit being a Tsuguko, but to him abandoning his family was unforgivable. Shoto didn't really care due to the little interaction, but he was kind of annoyed because he couldn't get closer to Izumi due to her change. Shoka was depressed because she had a little crush on Izuku, but she was too shy to confront him about it. Katsumi was also depressed, but more because she missed her chance due to the fact she was going to ask Izuku out the next day. The public had a different view on Izuku's departure. They viewed him as Indeku or useless. The media had a field day with the news of Izuku's departure. He was slandered, belittled, and humiliated with the whole world to watch. The public felt bad for the Yagi family that someone so useless was in their family. To say the Yagi family was pissed is an understatement. The Yagi family wanted to find Izuku, but two things stopped them. The first being that no one would help them due to the target of the search, and the second was themselves they didn't want to stop Izuku. The Hashira had mixed reactions on Izuku's departure, the general reaction though was indifference. It wasn't until a year later that Toshinori had to choose a new Tsuguko due to the pressuring of HQ, saying he needs a new one. He chose Izumi even though both individuals didn't want this because they believed Izuku deserved it and would return soon. For the next three years Izumi trained for final selection to the point that her wind breathing was superior to Izuku's, but Izuku was still stronger. Until finally it was time. Izumi Pav, January 10. Father just told me that it was finally time for final selection. Katsuki finally developed his own breathing form, I think it was called explosion breathing. He also taught Katsumi it. Shoka and Shoto I know are stronger due to the fact they use two breathings flame breathing and ice breathing. With Shoka stronger in flame and Shoto in ice. However, I know I still stand at the top in our age group. If Izuku was around you wouldn't be. I wonder how Izuku is doing it just turned four years now. I just hope he is still alive and found what he was looking for. Izumi it's time to start heading to selection, okay I'll be done in a second I miss you brother. CH.4 Final Selection, Izuku Pav, January 10th, morning, I woke up and started to make breakfast for Eerie and Master. Today was the registration day and warm-up for the final selection, with the following day being sent to the forest to be tested. Master just learned that this year's final selection will be livestreamed to the public. He was wondering if I wanted to reveal my identity or not, because they might just turn me away if they find out who I am. I told him I will wear a hood and go under his surname. Oh, I just realized I forgot to say his name it's Haramidoriya. He said that might work, but I will have to reveal myself eventually. I knew he was right, but honestly I felt scared of the reactions I would get especially from my family. We had finished eating, Eerie and Master were telling me good luck and to come back safe. Eerie was nervous for me because this would be longest we had been separated since I found her. I told her not to worry. I was wearing a orange kimono with red trimmings on the sleeve and with my sword and scabbard on my left hip. Also with with red suns all over the kimono with a hood attached so no one would recognize me. Also master made me dye my hair white to ensure I wasn't recognized, Eerie loved my white hair I might keep it. Time skip, UA University testing site, midday. I finally made it, and the only thing that came to my mind was damn, why is this place so big? This isn't even the campus there was a main building for the registration, plus it looked like it had housing for tonight. You could see the forest where the testing would be, and it was completely surrounded by wisteria trees. Actually everything was surrounded by wisteria trees, probably to make sure the demons didn't escape the forest. I looked around there was at least 500 or so people, but they were holding the exams for both the swordsmith and medical divisions at the same time, so that's probably why. But I could tell right away that it was mostly slayers, I didn't see anyone of interest, so I just went to register. Receptionist. Name. Izuku. Izuku Yamidoriya. Receptionist. Age. Dob. Breathing. Izuku. Um, 19. July 15, 2166 and sun breathing. Receptionist. Sun breathing. That's new, okay here is your slip and room key. Report to the base of the forest tomorrow morning at 9. Izuku. Okay and thank you. I went to my room since I didn't feel like doing anything or encountering anyone. I guess I'll just wait until tomorrow morning. Time skip to tomorrow morning. I arrived at the entrance of the forest, there were around 200 or so people. I recognized Izumi and I could tell she was different. Not just stronger but she seemed colder, she wasn't talking with her friends hell she wasn't even listening to them. She just seemed like she wasn't really there. I was going to talk to her, but the fear came back along with the voices. She doesn't miss you. She probably hates you. They were glad you left. They didn't even notice you left. They don't need you back. I knew it wasn't true, but I still feared that it could be so I decided not to confront her. 
I went to the back of the crowd to avoid attention. Okay you demon food. My name is Shota Azawa, and I am one of your proctors for the final selection. Your one and only goal is to survive. We will not help you so don't expect any. If any of you die we could careless. The only rules are you can't harm or sabotage your fellow slayers in any way, and you can't bring anything into the forest besides your katana and clothes. Sir how long will the exam be? It is extremely irresponsible for letting us die and you pointed at Izuku take off your hood and pay attention. I think this guy might be stupid or something, I mean aren't our masters supposed to tell us about the final selection? He is also too strict I don't think he will make it out. I decided to just ignore him which from what I saw pissed him off, but the proctor shut him up and finished the instructions. Azawa. If you stayed quiet or just listened to your master you would know it would take 7 days. Now as I was saying the forest is around 20 miles or so. There is only 4 spots in the entire forest that aren't covered by trees, the only reason I'm saying that is because the trees are so thick that a demon could still roam even during the day. Use that knowledge wisely. As you also might know this final selection is being livestreamed to the public, so there will be drones following participants or groups that we deemed interesting so don't disappoint. I also recommend staying in groups of 5 to increase survival. Now let's begin. The proctor took 50 participants to the entrance to make it easier to enter, and every 10 minutes he would let another 50 enter. Unfortunately, I was paired with Izumi and her friends and that annoying guy. Besides them none of the others really caught my eye. I did notice that no one had mastered total concentration breathing constant besides me and some girl in a different group. Azawa finally came to us and told us it was time. A1, we entered and Izumi automatically took charge and said that we should stick together to ensure we all survive. Most of the group agreed because they didn't want to die, while some just wanted to kill demons. I was planning to just ditch them when I saw an opportunity. The annoying guy with glasses kept bugging me about the hood. Luckily for me the opportunity finally came. Are you even listening to me you have to take that hood off, Izuku? God kill me. Itsuki. Oh I four eyes shut up or you're going to attract a demon, too late, Izumi. Watch out, a demon landed in front of us and automatically killed two participants. It was around 10 feet tall with four eyes and arms. It must have been confident in its strength to attack a group of 50. However, it seems pretty weak. Now which form? Ah, that should do. Narrator Pav, Izumi. I need to kill it before it kills any more. Wind, huh? Sun breathing. Fifth form, setting sun transformation. In an instant the demon was dead with upside down Izuku next to his head where he had cut it. What is this it looks like our first demon has been slain in the selection. It was cool too. We better keep an eye on this hooded fellow. This is how I will write the host and to note the slayers can't hear them, but the audience can hear the slayers. Izuku. Lands I better separate while they are still confused. Flickers away. Izumi. Hey where did he go? Itsuki. I wasn't even able to bring out my sword before that extra killed it. Shoto. That speedy has to be as fast as dad. Also that wasn't flame breathing. Oh look at that speed it looked like he just vanished that had to be at least a sure level speed. Damn the drones can't keep up I guess we look for him later viewers. The public was impressed with the speed and the power the hooded figure possesses. Plus they actually have never seen that breathing before. Proctor room, something seems off with that hooded kid. Azawa what is his name? Azawa. It says here that he goes by Izuku Midoriya. I Izuku. Is he my son Azawa? Azawa. I don't know Yagi-sama, but from what I saw earlier when I got a glimpse of his hair it was white. Ashinori. Oh I see. NG do you recognize that form? NG. No, whatever he is using it ain't flame breathing. However, it does look familiar. Azawa. What did he put down as his breathing technique? Azawa. He put down sun breathing. Huh, never heard that one before. I see I swear I have heard that name before. Are you okay Nezu? Nezu? Yes I am fine Asami. You finally see a room with around 7 people sitting on a long table facing large monitors. On the far left sits Shota Azawa wearing a long scarf with no Ori and the demon slayer uniform. On his right is a woman with long purple hair tied in a ponytail, she wears glasses along with just a demon slayer uniform that ahem reveals her assets. On her right is the wind Hashira, Tashinori Yagi who was there to watch his Tsuguko daughter. On the far right we have Mizuki Harada, the shadow Hashira who is also there to watch her Tsuguko. She has long black hair that has grey tips with solid black eyes. Her Hayori is black with a hexagon style with dark grey trimming. On her left is Asami Hashibira the current flower Hashira she also there to watch her Tsuguko. She has short black hair that turns into blue tips. Her eyes are two different color with the left being blue and the right green. She wears the flower Hashira Hayori, along with a dark purple demon slayer uniform. On her left is Enji Todoroki the current flame Hashira, who is there to watch his kids. And in the middle is very short man with short white hair and black eyes. He goes by Nezu. Nezu. I'll figure it out eventually. Enji. 
He won't last long though due to his lack of teamwork with the others. Back to Izuku. Izuku Pav. Okay I think that's far enough now I guess I'll just look for some demons or something. I really thought that guy would be stronger. I didn't find a single demon or slayer for the rest of the day. I didn't sleep that night so I could continue searching. Day 2. It was around midday already and I only found two demons since the first one I encountered. But I didn't even need a form for them. Also, unfortunately a drone finally found me at around sunrise, so that's there. I thought it would be another boring day until I heard a scream. I ran to the sound until I came across two demons that were about to eat girl with a spiky ponytail. I could see she was separated from her sword that was laying on the ground behind demons. She doesn't belong here. I can tell just by looking at her. Ah, damn it I'm already going to die. Master was right, no they all were right. I shouldn't have come here. I'm not ready. I should have listened. The only reason I'm alive still is because they are arguing with each other on who gets what part of my body. Damn the demons don't even consider me a threat. I'll just close my eyes and accept my death. Sun breathing. Third form, raging sun. Huh, why is it quiet now? Izuku Pav. I killed the demons with two quick strikes, they weren't even near strong. They didn't even have blood demon arts. I looked at the girl she was terrified, but she had her eyes closed, it looks like she had accepted her death. Huh, why is it quiet now? Izuku. You don't belong here. Huh? Who are you? Where are the demons? Did you kill them? Izuku. Why are you here? You obviously aren't ready for the selection. Either your master hated you and just wanted to get rid of you or they are an incompetent trainer. Don't talk ill about my master she is a great trainer. It was neither she told me I wasn't ready. But I didn't listen and still came to selection. Izuku. That stupid. Walks away. Hey where do you think you're going? You can't just talk shit and walk away. Follows after him. She followed me in silence for a while. I knew she was still trying to get over the whole almost dying thing which I know can be eye-opening. I guess I'll ditch her soon. Which I was about to do until I remembered the promise I made to Eri. Almost forgot about it too. Flashback, two weeks ago. Eri. Dad you need friends. Izuku. Okay that's rude and out of nowhere. Eri. Dad I know you struggle with emotions and how I was the first one to make you happy. But maybe if you talk to people you will gain more. Izuku. Eri you know I don't have the best communication skills. Eri. I know dad but promise me to at least try. Izuku. I don't know Eri. Eri. Dad, please try. Izuku. Sai okay Eri I promise. Eri. Smiles thank you dad. Flashback end. Izuku. Sai I'm sorry about disrespecting your master. Oh. It's okay. You were just making an assumption because of my skill. Izuku. Izuku Midoriya. Oh, um em Momo Yeoi Rozu. Izuku. Nice to meet you Yeoi Rozu. Momo. Same Midoriya. It went back to silence for a while before Momo broke the ice again. Momo. What breathing technique do you use? I use water breathing. Izuku. Sun breathing. Momo. Hmm. I never heard of that one before. A demon came out of a bush and lunged at Izuku. Momo. Watch out huh. The demon's head was already cut off. Momo didn't even see Izuku unsheathe his katana. Momo. Whoa that was so cool what form did you use in your breathing? Izuku. I didn't use one. It was far too weak to waste one on it. Momo. How you're that strong. Izuku. No you're just weak. Momo. Oh. They walked a little while longer just talking about random stuff, whether it be the weather or why Izuku wears a hood. You know the usual. Izuku. Yeoi Rozu. Why did you disobey your master? Momo. I wanted to prove to both my master and the other disciples that I wasn't useless. I always struggled in performing the forms and I just wanted to show her I could be useful. Izuku. I see. Momo. Why did you join the selection Midoriya? Izuku. Because I wanted to get stronger to protect my daughter and to redeem myself for a past mistake. Momo. You have a daughter? Who's the lucky lady? Izuku. There is no lady in the picture. Momo. Oh I see. Izuku. Yeoi Rozu the next demon we come across I want you to slay it. Momo. What me? But I can't. Izuku. I wasn't asking. Eventually they did come across a demon. It was feasting on some purpled haired girl. Which from what it looked like got the drop on her. Momo Pav. Izuku. Okay it doesn't look that strong get to it. Momo. Oh oh okay. I unsheathed my katana which gained the demon's attention. I wanted to run away and let Midoriya handle it but from what it sounded like earlier he most likely let me die this time. The demon charged at me with a swing from the right. I barely blocked it but even then it felt like I got hit with a sledgehammer. I rolled back but the demon wouldn't let up. I can't get my breathing under. Come on think Momo. What form? How do I get an opening? Anything. Flashback. Momo breathe. Let the oxygen flow through your body not out. Let it flow like water in a river. Now become one with the water. 
Flash back end. I took a deep breath and slashed down, cutting the demon's arm off and for it to stumble back. Now water breathing. First form, water surface slash I slice the demon's head off. I finally was able to perform a form. Midoriya I did it did you see that I turned around, but he was gone, the body was buried, and besides that there was no trace of him. Thank you Midoriya. A3, Izuku Pav, it is around 10 at night on our third day. Nothing had really happened since I left Yaoi Rozu. I was just walking around until something caught my eye a cleaver for a sound breather but no body, but instead a blood trail and a lot of footprints. I followed the prints and came across five demons closing in on two girls, one with orange hair and a side ponytail, and the other black bob cut hair they looked like they had some wounds, but not life threatening. I jumped in. Sun breathing. Seventh form, Beneficent Radiance. I landed in the middle of the demons while using the form which easily killed all the demons, while cutting off a few body parts along with the head. Izuku. Are you girls okay? Shocked relieved why ya? Yeah. Thank you. Shock nods, Izuku. Okay good. Let me check your wounds. No, that's fine. Izuku. I insist. Okay, thank you. I looked them over for injuries, orange hair broken left hand, gash on the cheek, and twisted ankle. Black hair dislocated left shoulder, gash on the abdomen, and hyperextended left knee from running. I started to treat them to the best of my abilities and with little supplies. While starting a conversation see I can multitask eerie. Izuku. What's your guy's name? Oh I'm Itsuka Kendo and this is Yui Kadai. Izuku. Nice to meet you, I'm Izuku Midoriya. Kadai bite on this hands a torn piece of his kimono, Yui. Nods bites on it, Izuku. Okay on three. One pops her shoulder in place, Yui. Muffled scream, Izuku. Okay now for the cuts and for Kendo's hand. I treated the rest of the wounds with pieces of cloth and a branch for Kendo's hand, Izuku. So what breathing do you guys use? Itsuka. I use fist breathing, Yui. I use sound breathing, Itsuka. What is your breathing I've never seen anything like it before. It didn't look like flame breathing, Izuku. Oh I use sun breathing, Itsuka. Never heard of it, Izuku. Sweat drops yeah I get that a lot. But I'll stay with you guys until daybreak just to be safe, Itsuka. Oh thank you. But you don't have to do that, Izuku. I know I just want to. Endo and Kadai blush because they aren't used to someone caring. 30 minutes later, they're just standing around or laying in some people's case. Izuku. Oh yeah almost forgot. Flickers away. Yui. Where he go? Izuku. Appears in front of them isn't this yours Kadai. Reveals the cleaver from earlier. Yui. Oh yes. Thank you so much. Izuku. Oh by the way why did you guys join the selection? Itsuka. I wanted to get stronger so I can prove to my father that fist breathing is a reliable breathing technique. Yui. I just wanted to try and make friends here. That went not so well. Izuku. Well I consider you a friend. Yui. Blushes oh thank you. Why did you join? Izuku. I wanted to get stronger so I could protect my daughter better in the future and to redeem myself for my previous selfish actions. Both. You have a daughter is there a mom in the picture? Look at each other and blush in embarrassment. Izuku. Chuckles no there isn't a mom in the picture. Both. Okay still embarrassed. I stayed with them until sunrise just to be sure they healed enough to survive on their own. We talked the whole time. No demons attacked us, but I did sense a couple of them thinking about but decided against it. When the sun finally rose I left them and started going on my way. They seemed like nice girls. A4. It was maybe 6 or so hours since I left Kendo and Kadai. Now as I speak I am surrounded by at least 20, number 30 demons. It seems like they set up an ambush for me. Great, the drone caught up with me too so now Eri is going to worry. Oh well let's get this over with. Oh it looks like this is the end of the road for our hooded star. He most likely won't get out of this one. If he wants to live he better start running now. What? What is he doing? Is he taking a fighting stance? This kid must be crazy. The proctors were surprised with Izuku's choose of fighting, but they believed he was most likely going to die. The public thought the same thing that Izuku was just trying to kill himself. Until he started moving. I rushed the first demon going for a quick beheading. I moved to the next one that was standing next to him with a slash at the neck, quick beheading. The third one was ready and tried to slash at me with its claw, sidestepped and cut off its arm then a follow-up slash to take the head. The demons got out of their confusion with five of them jumping at me at once. Sun breathing. Eleventh form, fake rainbow. Enhanced I left an after image at the point where the demons landed and beheaded three of them as soon as they landed. I then killed the remaining two with two slashes for each of their necks. 22 left. I turned around and say 8 demons rushing at me. Sun breathing. Ninth form, sun dragon dance. Choose the alternate name because it's easier to write. I rushed the 8 with each slice taking a head then making the form stronger along the way. After I cut the 8 head I felt really good like I could do this all day. 
that was like happiness, but it felt different, and after every demon I slayed I felt like I had to kill more. I felt the thrill of battle for the first time. And damn did it feel good. 14 left. The remaining demons were terrified but still hopeful that they could take me on. I was going to enjoy snuffing that hope out. I challenged them to approach me with a simply come on and a smug look. That made half of them instantly rush me in anger. Slashed the first one 13, dodged the second one's attack and went for the head 12, next two hesitated, and I took their heads 11 10, the last three tried to regroup, but it was too late 9 8 7. The last seven were terrified I could tell they were going to try and run. Who could blame them they just watched 23 of their fellow demons get slaughtered by a slayer in two minutes. Sun breathing. First form, waltz in an instant I was on the first one, and had killed it. The other demons instantly took off, and I chased them down and killed each one while laughing with a smirk on my face. Zero. I, I can't believe it he he killed every single one of them. The proctors couldn't believe what they just watched. They saw a kid just slaughter 30 demons without even trying, and to top it off he was laughing while doing it. The public was even more surprised they just watched a single slayer do something that usually takes a Hashira or a small team of slayers. Plus his fighting style was beautiful, it looked like he was dancing around the demons while killing them. This hooded figure really was interesting to watch. A5, Narrator Pav, the Zuku really didn't do much this day besides killing demons and burying any fellow slayers he comes across. Now today we follow the proctors and how they look into Midoriya fellow. NG is starting to think he has heard of sun breathing before and that it might be in his library back at home. Nezu has a theory on this breathing, but he has to make a very important call first, so he steps out of the room. Ringing, hello Nezu. How can I help you today? Nezu. Leader Sama, I have some interesting news on one of the participants in the selection. Oh what is it Nezu? Is it bad? Nezu. No Leader Sama, he claims to have a breathing technique called sun breathing. And I wanted to know if you have ever heard of it. Plus none of us have seen these forms before. Silence, Nezu. Leader Sama. Is everything alright? So it's finally time Nezu send me the recordings of the selection after it's over. If he is what I think he is I want to meet them after the selection. Nezu. What if he doesn't live? If he truly pauses the sun breathing then I wouldn't worry about that. End of call, Nezu. Who are you Izuku Midoriya? At the Demon Slayer HQ. So after all these centuries it's finally time to go after the Demon King again. Let's hope we can finally finish the job this time. A6, Izuku Pav, it was around midday when I found a stream that was in one of the open spots Azawa was talking about. I decided to clean my clothes and myself a little because I felt dirty. So, I got to the stream and took of my kimono including the hood, so I could wash them. I was finished with them and now I was working on my body. Kept my pants on by the way. I heard rustling in the foliage and turned and saw a girl with a brown bob cut come out, rosy cheeks and brown eyes wearing a pink kimono, and started making her way to the stream. I don't think she has seen me yet. Finally I can take a bath and clean my clothes. Said the girl. She was about to take off her kimono until. Izuku. Clears throat. Looks at Izuku. Both. Awkward silence. Screams. Ten minutes later. How embarrassing. I'm sorry I didn't see you there please forgive me for walking in on you. I almost stripped in front of a boy. Izuku. It's okay. It's an open area I can't really blame you for walking in on me. That was close. My name is Achako Yuraka please forgive me bowing a lot, Izuku. I told you it's fine. My name is Izuku Midoriya. Please get up. Sweat drops, Achako. Okay also are you going to put your shirt at least back on. Not that mind if you don't, Izuku. Oh alright haha. <laughs> Puts undershirt back on, Achako. I guess I'll just clean my sword instead. It was getting a little dirty. Starts cleaning sword, Izuku. Oh what breathing technique do you use, Achako. I use flower breathing. Is he a Tsuguko because he's using constant? I also can feel the strength radiating off of him. What about you Midoriya? Izuku. Oh I use sun breathing. She was the girl earlier that I sensed using constant. I believe she might be the flower Tsuguko. By chance are you the flower Tsuguko? Achako. Oh why yes I am. Are you perhaps a Tsuguko for a former Hashira? Sun breathing sounds familiar maybe master would know more about it. Izuku. Oh no. I'm not I just have a really good master. So you can use constant too. How long did it take you to master it? Achako. It took me about him three months I think. How about you? Izuku. Really it took me six months to get it down. Achako. Maybe I'm just better than you. Shrugs. Izuku. Hey. Both. Look at each other and then start laughing. They talked for a long time then they just sat there in silence. Enjoying each other's company. He told her about Iri and who he really was because he believed he could trust her. She understood to an extent on why he did it, but doesn't think she would be able to do that to her master. She told him her past and on how her parents died, and how she met her master. 
Three hours later, Achako. Izuku. Izuku. Yeah, Achako. Achako. Why did you become a slayer? Izuku. I wanted to become stronger so I could protect my daughter Iri to the best of my abilities. Also to redeem myself for a selfish mistake I made. Achako. I wouldn't call it a mistake. Izuku. Why not? Achako. Well if you never left then you would have never meet your master or more importantly Eri. Some things are just meant to happen whether we want them to or not. Silence, Izuku. Why did you become a slayer Achako? Achako. I felt like I owed it to my master because she rescued me from a demon that had killed my parents. Plus I never want anyone to go through that like how I did. That's why I think certain things are meant to happen like fate. Because if my parents didn't die that day, then I would have never met my master nor you. Silence, Achako. Well I think it's time we go our separate ways see you tomorrow Izuku. Flickers away. Izuku. Yeah see you tomorrow. So that's what it feels like. A7, sunrise. I couldn't remember if the seventh day was the day they returned or after, so I just choose the seventh day. It was time to return back to the opening, so I started running to it. It took me about maybe 15 or so minutes to make it. I was the second person to arrive with a Chaco already there waiting. I wasn't really surprised that she survived I could easily tell on the first day that she was the strongest participant besides me. Plus she didn't have a single scratch on her. I noticed on the sidelines it looked like they had the medical examines from their test here, to treat the wounded probably a part of their test. Excuse me sir. Are you wounded? Izuku. No, I'm perfectly fine thank you for asking. No problem. Congratulations on surviving. Walks away. Achako. I see that you made it. Though I'm not surprised. Izuku. I could say the same for you. Achako and I just stood there and talked while we waited for the other participants. One hour later, only 14 survived the selection which include me and Achako. I saw Yeoirozu, Kadai, Kendo, Izumi, Kitsumi, Kitsuki, Shoka and Shoto survived with minimal injury. There was a boy with yellow hair with a black lightning bolt in his hair, all he had was a bruise on his cheek. Another boy was wearing a black cloak he had black hair and a funny shape, plus he was wearing a yellow face mask. The last boy has red spiky hair, and he had a very outgoing personality he had a cut over his left eye. The last survivor was a girl with long green hair, but it had a funny texture to it she seemed unharmed. The girls that Izuku saved however were drilling holes in the back of Ichako's head with jealousy, because they heard her and Izuku talking to each other on a first name basis, and seemed real friendly with each other. Izuku. Why do I feel like I have made a grave error? Ichako. Someone's plotting my death again. Momo. Who's she? Is she his girlfriend? Why would I care we barely meet this week? Hell I haven't even seen his face. Itsuka. I knew he was a playboy. Oh what am I saying he was just being nice to us. But they seem really close. Yui. Plotting. Ten minutes later. Azawa. Okay good you are all here now we will start by explaining the ranks in corporation, when you will report to the university and what we are going to give you today. Any questions? Silence good. Azawa. There are ten ranks not including the Hashira. Kino, Kinodo, Hino, Hinodo, Tsuchino, Tsuchinodo, Kano, Kanodo, Mizuno, and Mizunodo being the bottom rank, which is what you are now. The way you move up the ranks is simply completing missions and killing demons. We have drones following you to make sure you do your job. Azawa. You will report to UA in two weeks on the Monday because you will get your weapon on that Saturday. Speaking of equipment we will hand you out a phone which is your schedule, and once you reach the second semester, it will alert you if you have a mission. However, if you face a demon that has blood demon art that deals with technology, we have crows to act as an substitute. Also we will give you your uniforms along with them. There is no real rule on customization, the only exception being is that you have to wear the uniform. Starts handing the items out. Azawa. Now you will pick your oars for your weapons however the reason we have proctors is to decide which out of you has the most potential to become a Hashira. Honestly, we see a lot of potential in most of you. But the reason I'm saying this is because the person we deemed with the most potential will choose their or first. Second will be the second most and so on. Katsuki. Get ready Izumi. We know none of these extras are stronger than you. Izumi. Be nice Kaken. Azawa. Okay first is Izuku Midoriya with 7 sevens votes please come choose your or. The twins. Huh. Not Izumi, but she killed like 15 demons. Izumi. I Izuku. Izuku. Walks up to the table whom I know nothing about swords me thing, so I'll just go with this one. Picks a random ore. Azawa. Okay put it in the box with your name. Izuku puts his ore in the box. 
The rest were soon called up Achako Yuraka 7 7, Izumi Yagi 6 7, Katsuki Bakugo 5 7, Denki Kaminari 5 7, Shoto Todoroki 5 7, Shoka Todoroki 4 7, Katsumi Bakugo 4 7, Yui Kadai 4 7, Ijiro Kirishima 3 7, Dumikage Tokoyami 3 7, Ibara Shiazaki 3 7, Itsuka Kendo 2 7, and Momo Yeoi Rozu 1 7. Azawa. This concludes the ceremony orientation I'll be seeing you in two weeks, and your swords will be ready by then and delivered to your homes. Leaves. Izuku. Well I better get going Ichako I don't want Iri to worry anymore. Ichako. Let's exchange numbers because it's nice to talk to someone that similar sort of. Izuku. I agree. Exchange numbers well I better get going see you in two weeks Ichako. Flickers away. Izuku didn't know that the girls he saved were about to ask for his number, but he had already left. They glared at Ichako in response who was confused and uncomfortable so she left. Two hours later, I finally made it home. The fatigue is finally getting to me you know that usually happens when you don't stop to sleep for a week. I was walking on the sidewalk and I could see the estate from where I was. I was maybe 10 yards away until the front door was kicked open and then a white blur tackled me. Eerie. I was so worried I know you're super strong, but please don't ever fight that many by yourself ever again. Tearing up, Izuku. It's okay Eerie. You want to know why? Eerie? Why? Izuku? Because I'm here. Eerie? Chuckles so cheesy. Izuku? Laughs with her. They laugh together as his master was watching from a distance with a small smile on his face. What are breathing? Notable users in both my story and in canon. Sakanji Yurakadaki, Giyu Tomioka, Liko Tomioka, and Momo Yaoi Rozu. One of the original styles that is directly derived from the sun breathing. More of a defensive style compared to other techniques. Users must be graceful and keep their movements agile. Consists of 12 uh, I mean 11 forms ya yeah, 11. The current water hashira is Liko Tomioka. The Nikron blade for water users is blue. First form. Water surface slash. A powerful single concentrated slash that becomes more powerful with increased momentum. Second form. Water wheel. A forward spinning strike in the air that flows into a circular motion. Third form. Flowing dance. The user winds up their sword and body and flows like a stream with anything in their way being cut down. Fourth form. Striking tide. The user makes multiple consecutive slashes while twisting their body and sword in a flowing fashion. Fifth form. Blessed rain after the drought. A similar strike as the first form, but instead meant to give the target as little pain as possible. Meant for surrendering demons. Not used often anymore. Sixth form. Whirlpool. The user twists their body violently to create a whirlpool of wind to cut everything in its path. However, this form is at its strongest when underwater or in water. Due to it drawing energy from the surrounding water. Seventh form drop ripple thrust. A fast and accurate stab. Eighth form. Waterfall basin. The user cuts the target vertically in a flowing motion. Most effective when falling downward. Ninth form. Splashing water flow. A movement form meant to close the distance between a target and the user. Useful for when the environment has no footholds. Tenth form. Constant flux. A continuous flowing attack that gets stronger with each rotation due to momentum. Also takes the form of a dragon. Eleventh form. Dead calm. The user ceases all movements and must be in a calm state, or the form won't work. The form blocks all projectiles and attacks, but can be broken through if there are too many. Wealth form. Not revealed yet. CH.5 The Swordsmith and the Meeting. Izuku Pav. Saturday. It has been two weeks since final selection. I didn't do much while waiting all I did was talk to Ichako on the phone. I think we talked at least maybe twice a day on the phone for about an hour. Yuri talked to Ichako at one point to which they got along really well, and I mean in a scary way too. After one of those times Hiri looked at me gave me a thumbs up and said, I approve. And walked away giggling. I still don't know what she was talking about, but I'll get to that bridge some other day. I also continued Hiri's training. Which is what I am doing now. Izuku. Okay Hiri try again and aim for that tree. Hiri. Right. Hiri took a deep breath and readied her stance raising the sword high to the right. Hiri. Wind breathing. Second form, claws purifying wind. Hiri swung down creating four vertical slashes that destroyed the tree completely. Izuku. Swing through and return to the ready after you strike don't assume that you killed the demon. Eerie. Right. I was about to have her go to the next form until we were interrupted. Um excuse me is this the Midoriya residence and are you Izuku Midoriya? I looked to my right and saw a girl around my age carrying a cloth that was wrapped around something. She was wearing the demon slayer uniform with a little soot on it and it being unbuttoned showing her undershirt that was a muscle shirt. She had long pink dreads with yellow eyes. Izuku. It is and I am. I assume you are the swordsmith. Yep, that's me. The name's Mei Hatsum and I am the one who forged your blade and all the others of your same class. However, yours was the first one made and delivered. 
Now let's start the unsheathing so I can deliver the next one. I bet it's red. Izuku. Okay. Follow me we'll do it in the living room my master should also be there. Eerie would you like to watch? Eerie. Would I? Izuku. Would you? Eerie. Would I? Izuku. Okay. Time skipped to the living room. Everyone was kneeling around me while I knelt in the middle while holding the scabbard with sword in it. It was a simple black scabbard with the handguard for the sword being a little sun with a yellow center and red going out. May. Unsheathe already. Eerie. Yeah come on dad. May. Dad. Izuku. Okay okay. I unsheathe it was a great make perfect with no blemishes, but no color yet. I changed my grip and the sword slowly started changing to a pure black. May. Black. I never have seen a black sword before. Actually I don't think I've heard of one either. Master. Smiles perfect. Just as I expected from you. Eerie. Stars in the eyes so cool. Well master seems happy with the color, so I probably don't have to worry about anything. Izuku. So may, I guess you better get going now that it's over I don't want to take any more of your time. Sheathes the sword. May. Nope got plenty of time so what's your breathing technique because I've never seen a black sword in my life and I've done this with hundreds of slayers. However, to get something like this on the first one I made myself. It's exciting gets real close to Izuku. Izuku. Oh um I use sun breathing. Also I don't know why it turned black either. Why did she get so close? Eerie. What's going on here I thought dad was with a chaco, why is he letting this girl get so close? Who gasped a shocked expression no, it can't be. Don't tell me my dad's a player. Disgusted look I never knew he was that type of person. Izuku. Why is Eerie looking at me like that? May. Sun breathing. Never heard of it what is it derived from? Also you're getting more interesting with ever answer. Eerie looked even more disgusted with Izuku. Phone ringing. Izuku. Oh that's mine is it a chaco? Caller IDHQ. Izuku. Hello. Is this Izuku Midoriya? Izuku? Yes, that's me. Leader Sama has summoned you please arrive as soon as possible. We will be expecting you. Hanged up, Izuku. Well I better get changed the HQ just called me. I need to head there now. May. Ah. Hey take my number gives number so, um, you can call if you need repairs yeah, that's why. Izuku. Okay. Iri looked even more disgusted. May leaves. I changed into my uniform and attached my sword to my hip. I was about to leave when my master handed me a Heiori that he said belonged to the second sun breather and he wanted me to wear it. It was green and black checkered pattern that looked fairly new. I accepted and put it on and headed out. Eerie also told me she wanted to talk with me when I got back she looked mad. Time skip one hour later. I made it to HQ it was a giant compound that kept the old time feel. It had 13 estates inside with 12 of them each housing the family of the Hashira or just the Hashira. One of them being my old home. However, the main estate is the leader Sama's resident and also where Hashira meetings are held. I entered the compound after the guards checked me and I walked to the leader's estate while trying to avoid my old home. I made it with simple design with wisteria trees surrounding it. The gate opened automatically for me and I made my way to the meeting site. Once there I waited as one of the servants went to fetch the leader. Leader Sama has arrived leaves. I immediately knelt before the leader. Leader. Please raise your head Yagi-san or is it Midoriya these days I can't remember. Izuku still has white hair for now or maybe forever. I looked up from shock at the leader. This is the first time I have ever met her in person. She was beautiful even with a noticeable ailment. She was around 5'10 fair-skinned, her long hair that went to her knees was black, which turned into a flame orange at around the elbows. She looked like she was in her early 20s, but the most defining thing about her was her soft voice and her eyes. The left being a simple goldish brown while the other was rampant with disease that had left it blind, which was slowly making its way to the other eye barely at the nose. She was wearing a simple black kimono. Leader. Hello Midoriya-san. This is the first time we have met my name is Nozomi Kamado, and I am the 65th leader of the Modern Demon Slayer Corporation. I assume you are wondering why I summoned you? Izuku. Yes Kamado-sama. Nozomi. Is it true that you wield the sun breathing? Izuku. Yes I do Kamado-sama. Nozomi. Show me. Izuku. Yes ma'am. I stood up and walked to a dummy that was couple yards away. I unsheathed my sword and readied my stance. Sun breathing. Tenth form, fire wheel. Nozomi. So it is true. Come sit with me we have much to discuss. Izuku. Yes ma'am. Nozomi. Izuku do you know the origin and purpose of sun breathing? Izuku. No ma'am. All I know is that my master said it was important. Nozomi. Indeed it is. Sun breathing is the first breathing technique and where all other breathing techniques are derived from. The purpose of sun breathing and its users is to battle and kill the demon king. This is now your purpose however I will not force you to go down this path in your life, Izuku. If that's the case how come almost no one knows about sun breathing or the previous users, Nozomi. 
because a hundred or so years ago the Demon King and his moons attacked and destroyed all records of the previous users and sun breathing. I'm not going to ask how your master knows it because it will probably be safer that way. Nozomi. The reason I'm telling you all this is because I want you to skip UA and go straight to hunting. Now I'm not going to force this onto you, but this is obligation of a sun breather, plus you have already quit being a slayer once. No one would be surprised if you did it again. Now if you accept this proposition you will most likely die whether it be to Demon King or to a moon. Do you accept? Izuku? Yes, I accept I can't run from my destiny forever. Plus this closest to redemption I can get to. Nozomi. Good. Now let me tell you how this is going to work. Your first goal is to kill as many moons as you can, until the corporation is strong enough to battle the Demon King. Your second goal is to unlock your Demon Slayer Mark and Red Blade, however that will come with time. Finally do not let anyone know of your existence anymore, no one must know what your purpose is or your breathing that includes the Hashira. If anyone asks tell them that you gave up on being a Slayer. I will tell the other Hashira once you are ready. Izuku. What's a Demon Slayer Mark? Nozomi. I will explain it once you unlock it. Now let's discuss your first mission that's on this Monday. Wine Breathing, notable users in both Canon and Fainan. Tsunemi Shinazagawa, Nana Shimura, Tashinori Yagi, Izumi Yagi, Izuku Midoriya Brief Time, and Yuri Midoriya. Wind Breathing is one of the original breathes derived from Sun Breathing. It was developed in the Sengoku era and honed over time. The current Wind Hashira is Tashinori Yagi. Wind Breathing is more of an airborne fighting style compared to the breathes and is more offensive. Consists of 10 forms. The Nikron Blade is green for wind users. First form. Dust Whirlwind Cutter. User dashes at the target at fast speeds and continuously attacks in a horizontal cyclone pattern. Second form. Claws Purifying Wind. The user raises the sword to his right and strikes down unleashing four vertical slashes at once on the enemy. Like a claw, ha get it okay I'll stop. Third form. Clean Storm Wind Tree. The user unleashes a whirlwind of slashes that can act as both defense and offense. Cutting up anything that gets to close. Fourth form. Rising Dust Storm. User releases several slashes from above could be protection or attacking an airborne enemy. Fifth form. Cold Mountain Wind. User creates several circular arched slashes above their target which increase in size. Sixth form. Black Wind Mountain Mist. The user rotates their body in an uppercut movement, creating a tornado of slashes. Seventh form. Gale, Sudden Gusts. The user leaps in the air while swinging their blade which generates winds to tear their opponent apart. Eighth form. Primary Gale Slash. The user leaps up in the air and swings their blade to tear up their opponent with circular winds. Ninth form. Iditan Typhoon. The user backflips in the air, and while upside down they unleash a torrent of circular slashes, destroying everything it hits. Tenth form. Not revealed yet. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.